Hey everyone, welcome to the Gentleman Scholars Club. Today we're presenting another in our series on classic menswear fabrics. Previously we had done a video on the winter fabric moleskin. Today we're doing the quintessential summer fabric seersucker, which you may be able to tell by what I'm wearing right now. Other than sharing a unique sort of name and generally being made from cotton, moleskin and seersucker don't have too much in common. And we'll describe seersucker today so you can get an idea of its characteristics. First of all, in terms of the name, where does it come from? Short story, India. Long story, you may read that it comes from a Persian phrase or a Hindi phrase or an Urdu phrase or a Hindustani phrase. In any case, it originates from a version of shear or shakar. Shear referring to milk, shakar referring to sugar. And this is the Persian pronunciation. Uh, so it originated in India on the subcontinent. The British, as they colonized India in the 17th century, became aware of seersucker as a fabric. Um, the research I did doesn't really show how seersucker was used in India, so more research would be necessary to derive that. Uh, but the British did find that material to be useful, and in particular for its qualities in handling warm or hot weather. So what does the name refer to, Shira Shakar? Uh, milk and sugar. The milk aspect refers to the smooth nature of the cloth. So there is smooth, there's smoothness to it to begin with. And usually there's also an, um, elements of white in the seersucker. There are solid navy seersuckers, but I'll talk about that later. And so there usually is some white in it, which would be the milk, and it's also smooth. And then there's the sugar, which would be kind of the grainy texture of seersucker. And if you're familiar with the fabric at all, you'll know that it has kind of that rough sort of puckered texture. I think you can see it there on the angle. And that, using your imagination, can be seen as grains of sugar sprinkled into milk without sort of mixing it up together. Uh, this, is, this texture is created uh, in the weaving of seersucker. Uh, and basically, uh, when you think about the warp and the weft, the two directions of uh, threads or fibers when they're woven, in one direction, the threads are taut. In the other direction, they're woven in while the, other, while the other threads remain taut. And when the fabric is completed, it creates this sort of wavy texture. Um, and this has a particular benefit in hot weather uh, because on a very subtle level, perhaps you might even call it microscopic level, there is less surface area of the fabric in contact with your skin. And that allows more air circulation, and that helps keep you cool. Uh, not really the case if you're wearing a seersucker sport coat because you have a shirt underneath, and the shirt is the garment that's in contact with your skin. But if you wear a seersucker shirt, which I'll show you later, um, you'll definitely see that benefit. And even with a sport coat or a suit jacket uh, or trousers, um, the diminished contact between the cloth of the seersucker jacket and your shirt also allows some air circulation. So on a, on a really subtle level, uh, it's designed to keep you cooler. And it works because seersucker has been a quintessential summer fabric, as I said earlier, for centuries. Uh, the British appropriated seersucker in the 17th century, brought it to their other tropical and hot weather colonies. Uh, but seersucker really came into its own in the United States around the early 20th century uh, in, the, in the work of J, uh, Joseph Haspel. Um, for various dates, I've seen 1904, 1907, or 1909 for when he decided to take seersucker, which was at that time a workwear garment or workwear fabric, and use it for tailoring. And the selling point of Haspel was that seersucker was a low-maintenance garment in addition to keeping you uh, cool in hot weather. If you think of the American South, hot, humid, um, definitely a need for the, this sort of fabric. And the low maintenance aspect was promoted back then and it continues to be a selling point now. The um, story is that Haspel wore his seersucker suit into the ocean and took a swim in it, came out as he dried off, he wore the same exact suit to an event that evening and was none the worse for wear. So low maintenance and designed to not require that much ironing either. Similar to linen, it already has that kind of wrinkly, rumpled 
texture, which it's supposed to have. And so it gives you that uh, ease of maintenance. And at the same time, it's a casual fabric. So you're dressing up in the sense that you're wearing tailoring, but you don't have to be concerned about being super polished. So an excellent garment to wear for uh, relaxed, smart, casual sort of situations, which is something that I like. Uh, the association with the South uh, continued throughout the decades. If you remember Gregory Peck in the film To Kill a Mockingbird, as a Southern lawyer, he wore uh, a seersucker suit, I believe in the same sort of pattern and color that I have on here. A little bit later, uh, Ben Matlock, another Southern lawyer, um, in the 80s and 90s, I believe, is when Matlock ran as a TV show. This was sort of his uniform. He wore it in almost every episode. And um, the typical fabrics for seersucker are what I'm wearing here, which is a sort of sky blue, bluish gray stripe, um, white, and navy. Those are the most common you can find these days. Uh, it's also possible to find them in sort of a reddish pink stripe. You may see green or other colors, but the three that I mentioned, are kind of a mid blue, a navy, a solid navy, and a white, are the most easy to locate uh, these days. Seersucker, as I said at the beginning of the video, in comparison with moleskin, also usually made in cotton, but you can also find linen seersuckers. And uh, Belisario, which is a, an Italian shirt maker, uh, does sell those as well. So in what ways can you wear seersucker? Um, one possibility, as I said earlier, is to wear it as a full suit. However, that really makes a strong statement, especially if you're not in the U.S. South these days. And so I prefer to wear it as a sport coat, uh, like I have on here. This is actually a Model 7 from the Armory ring jacket as done by the Armory in New York City or in, in Hong Kong. And it has a, a patch pocket, which lends this more of a casual air. So it's not definitely not a business suit. Patch pocket up here, and also uh, patch pockets down here, as you can see. And I wear it with uh, navy trousers. I'm wearing Berg and Berg flat front, high-waisted trousers. I'm wearing a linen and cotton shirt with a one-piece collar. Put together, kind of gives me a what I think is a smart, casual look. Looks kind of relaxed, but still dressy. Um, this is also completely unlined, as their Model 7 is. There's no absolutely no lining, so it fits kind of like a shirt. Um, I don't prefer it as a suit either, because A, um, it's cotton, and cotton tends to be a stiffer sort of fabric. It won't give you that same smoothness and drape as a wool, for example. And so it can make you look sort of bulky if you wear it as a full suit. It's kind of baggy, bulky, rumpled. If you look at Matlock, you'll know what I mean. And uh, so I prefer it as a sport coat cut and more of a slim fit without any sort of lining. Uh, secondly, I am not styling myself usually in an American way. So if you're interested in American style, uh, preppy, ivy, Americana, whatever, then definitely go for uh, a full seersucker suit. If you just want to do a touch of American style uh, mixed with Italian or European, then again, a sport coat might be a good option. And that's, what, that's usually what I like to do, sort of an uh, Italian influence style. Here I got a touch of, uh, have a touch of an American classic as well. So upon request, I moved to another location so you can see a little bit more of the suit. Got my academics bookcase back here, suitable for the Gentleman Scholars Club. And I'm showing you, if you do want to wear a seersucker as a suit, how you might do that. First piece of advice I have is to make sure that it fits well to you. Um, this should always be the case with any tailoring or any suit that you wear. However, there's less of a margin of error with cotton suits because of their relative stiffness, and especially with seersucker because of the stiffness combined with kind of the bagginess created by the puckering of the weave. So as you can see in this picture here from Alan C, depicting Alan C from the Armory, one of the co-founders of the Armory in Hong Kong, uh, he is wearing a striped seersucker suit from Liverano. Uh, it is bespoke, so definitely made to fit his body. And even though it has the typical striping, it doesn't look baggy at all. It looks different from what you might expect uh, if you look at, say, Matlock or the typical uh, heavyweight cotton suit. Part of that is the Italian craftsmanship. 
another part of it is again the bespoke nature of it and it fits it's tailored to him so as much as possible get one that fits you well and have it tailored down to uh, to achieve that effect now, the second thing i could recommend is to go with something that reads like a solid from afar i'm wearing here a navy seersucker suit from spear mckay from their 2021 spring and summer collection and i think from back there uh, it looks like a solid navy suit right even though it has that puckering and seersucker will always have that sort of puckering um, and that creates kind of a striping to the fabric, but in a navy, it's less distinct. And from afar, as I said, it looks like a solid, as far as I can tell. You can also get different levels or degrees of puckering with seersucker. Some of them are more extreme, and some tend to be finer in that area. Uh, when I first started looking at seersucker, I didn't like it because I saw this really heavy kind of crimping and puckering of the fabric. It looked sort of weird to me. Uh, looking at other versions, maybe more contemporary versions of it as produced for the market, um, I noticed that something like this is, is finer. And so I was, um, it was fine with me as well. And I thought I'd give it a try. And I think I, I enjoy wearing Seersucker as a casual suit in Navy, uh, as I said, from Spear and McKay. Um, one caveat I will mention with dark seersucker is that it does tend to collect some dust and lint and things like that because of the texture, right? So make sure that you do brush it off uh, from time to time so you're not going around collecting um, little bits of this and that on it. Um, and this is true of any Navy suit. Navy will always uh, show light colored dust and dirt, but uh, with a seersucker, particularly something to keep an eye on. Don't want to dissuade you though from trying it because I think I, I really enjoy wearing this, especially in a semi-casual way, right, with this shirt, one-piece collar shirt from the Gaudery in a light blue. And I've got a pocket square from uh, Kent Wong in a light blue, sky blue linen, no longer available. Um, but this is, a, this is the way I would do it in kind of the early summer when it's not too hot. Um, Navy can look unusual if it's like 80 or 90 degrees Fahrenheit out and you're wearing a full dark navy suit, in such situations you might want to wear something else, like a you know, white linen or cream linen or something along those lines. But when the temperature is sort of summery, but um, it's moderate, you can certainly pull off a casual suit in a navy seersucker like this one from Spear McKay. So we've talked about how to wear seersucker as a sport coat. We've talked about how to wear it as a suit. The third option is to wear it as a shirt. And most of the time you'll find seersucker shirts sold in more of the casual side of the spectrum. So they will be bold colors, they'll have more puckering than we find on tailoring. And a lot of times they'll be short sleeved. And with collars that are either cut away in an unusual sort of, uh, unusual sort of cutaway or a calf style or something along those lines. So those are designed to be worn without tailoring. In, in what I would call a resort style. Right? They're made to be worn as is, not under a jacket. So if you're looking for something to wear under a jacket, and even something with long sleeves and seersucker, it can be challenging. What I'm wearing here is a white seersucker from Magnus and Novus. It's another made to measure, made to order tailoring house in Hong Kong. Uh, these are also sold at the Rake in Britain, and that's where I bought mine from. I don't know if you can even see the seersucker pattern there, but it's quite light and it does have, I think you can see the traces of striping that are characteristic of the seersucker. Uh, it's a one piece collar, once more, something I've been wearing a lot recently if you watch my videos. And um, it has a light puckering and definitely can be worn under tailoring. Um, I like to wear it with something like linen and another recommendation I have is that you would not want to wear a seersucker shirt with a seersucker suit or a seersucker jacket even. A general rule of thumb is not to wear the same material a lot in a particular outfit, similar to wearing double denim, right? the Canadian tuxedo as it's called. You want to mix your fabrics, so mix your materials. So if you wear a seersucker shirt, then you wear something like a linen jacket or a linen suit. Now this is a linen suit from Spear and McKay and um, Spring and Summer 2021, and I'll be talking about casual suits in another video. Uh, but 
if you wear linen, like I said, on the outside, then you can wear a seer sack on the inside. Likewise, you might wear something like a wool linen silk blend or wool linen cotton blend, uh, but not another seersucker. And the opposite also applies, right? If you wear a linen shirt, then you don't want to wear a linen sport coat and linen trousers or a linen suit. You kind of want to limit it to two, two items, let's say, uh, but a lot of times you just want to mix things up, uh, mix materials. It's a general style rule. Um, so difficult to find in long sleeves and detailing, but if you want something for resort wear, you'll find no shortage of seersucker shirts from places like Proper Cloth. Uh, Spear McKay also has them, and a lot of other places sell them if you're just looking for a short sleeve, uh, short sleeve shirt. I tend not to wear, personally, I tend not to wear short sleeve shirts with buttons all the way down. I usually go with knitwear, like a polo shirt, a couple of buttons. If I wear all the way down buttons, uh, probably want to do uh, a long sleeve with a jacket or even a long sleeve on its own with the sleeves rolled up. And then lastly, you might find seersucker trousers or pants. And those are maybe the most challenging to wear. Um, I have a pair because it's part of that seersucker suit you saw earlier, but I don't really think I can mix and match that easily. There's something about the loose texture or the texture of it and the way it fits. Uh, maybe because it's so obviously textured, it's difficult to pair it with something else. And maybe you can pull that off, but um, I would do it only with a shirt as opposed to with a sport coat as well. I think you might be able to achieve that more readily. If you take a look at this image from uh, Penny Parma, they're promoting seersucker trousers here in, again, that classic light blue, uh, mid-blue stripe. And they're only styling it on the model uh, with a shirt rather than showing it with tailoring. So I think that is the best way to do it. And because it's shown this way here, I, I think they're uh, acknowledging the challenge or difficulty of mixing that with tailoring. So again, if you do choose trousers, choose them in a slim fit or something that at least fits closely to your body, not necessarily skinny, but fitting well uh, to minimize that baggy effect that some seersuckers can have. So there you have it, four options for wearing seersucker in the summertime, either with or without tailoring in sort of a relaxed way to a smart casual way. And the seersucker is very much a versatile fabric for hot weather, has a long, long history of that. And I hope that you are motivated to go out and try it for yourself if you haven't done so yet. Thanks for watching. Please like the video and follow us at Gentleman Scholars Club for more information on menswear fabrics, classic style, brands, and so on.